Well, welcome everyone, all of our campuses, all of you watching online, all of you here, Resurrection Weekend. Man, I'm so glad you're here. And if you're a guest, uh, you know, thank you. We're so honored that you would come and celebrate whatever campus you're on. Um, I know, too, on a weekend like this, there are many of us maybe who walked in the room only because we were invited by a family member or a friend. And uh, a lot of us, believer or not, um, walked in here with a lot of baggage. Uh, what I mean by that is the cares of life are real. And um, whether that's relational or financial or just anxiety or you know whatever, uh, there's a lot of things going on in our lives. And my hope for you today is, first of all, that, that you'd just let let God do what only God can do, that you would open your heart and your mind. I want to start with the Easter story in Luke chapter 23. We'll start with the cross and then we'll move forward from there. Luke 23, verse 44. By this time, it was about noon and darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. The light from the sun was gone and, and suddenly the curtain in the middle or the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn down the middle. Then Jesus shouted, Father, I entrust my spirit into your hands. And with those words, he breathed his last. Another uh, way of saying that in some of the other gospels is it is finished. Many of us right now know what the disciples and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Mary Magdalene, and all those that were followers of Jesus, if they were there at, uh, in Jerusalem, and, and as he was arrested, and betrayed, and uh, falsely accused, and nailed to the cross, and they watched whom they thought at that time was their Messiah die, and say it is finished. And many of us, in one way or another, there are times in our lives, and maybe you're there now, where it's like, where are you, God? My prayers, you don't seem to answer or hear. You've heard the saying, Friday's here, but Sunday's coming. Well, Sunday's here. Verse uh, on, a, a few verses on in chapter 23, here's what he says, here's what it says. But very early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. So they went in, but they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. And as they stood there puzzled, two men suddenly appeared to them clothed in dazzling robes. The women were terrified and, and bowed their faces to the ground. Then the men asked, why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. The pastor says, he is risen, and the people say. I don't know if you've ever had questions uh, in life. We've been in a series about who is Jesus, and today Jesus is the answer. And maybe you've said this a time or two, when I get to heaven, I've got a few things to ask God and with an attitude, you know, like why mosquitoes? Um, <laughs> Are the Cowboys ever going to win another Super Bowl? How many would agree that's a good question? I got some answers, but maybe they're a little more serious. Maybe why do bad things happen to good people? And maybe specifically, why are they happening to me? Why does God allow suffering in the world? For 24 years, um, this is a little lighter, but, but not Cowboy you know, talk. Um, for 24 years, I've had a question. I, I, I lived here from 84 to 90, uh, going to school, and I was a youth pastor in Irving, and, and then left for 10 years and came back December of 99 and started our church in January of 2000, and a few months later was spring, and I don't know what happened, but my allergies my eyes were crazy. It was, I'd never experienced that anywhere that I'd lived. And uh, I mean, I've gone to doctor after doctor for 24 years, spring and fall. I don't sneeze. I don't cough. It's not a sore throat. It's not ears. It's all in my eyes. And it's, I want to take them out. 
and and rub and you know it's just it's, it's awful it's and i know that it's it's light compared to what some of you have gone through but this is my story so i'm sticking to it um that all changed monday last weekend uh, before service, I was in my office. I had ice pack and then I had a heating pad. I had ice pack and heating pad. During the night, my eyes, and all weekend, my eye was just this one in particular anyway. Monday morning, I'd had enough. I just said, okay, I'm, I need an answer. So I went uh, to my eye doctor Monday afternoon and I'd never seen her before. I, the other, my other one had retired and so she just looked at me and I told her, what I had told countless other doctors and, uh, you know, care now places, you know, just trying to find some answers and the prescriptions and all the remedies. So don't send me an email about allergies. Okay. Please don't because I already know it doesn't work. Okay. So she looks in my eye over here and she goes, "Uh uh-huh. And she looked in this eye and she goes, "Uh aha. And I'm like, what does that mean? She goes, it's not allergies. Nobody's ever said this. I'm getting angry as she's talking. <laughs> she says, you have vernal conjunctivitis. Now, I know you know what that is, but I didn't know what that was. And it is an immune disorder that is exasperated by allergies, but it is not allergies, and it can be treated. So Monday night, I get my prescription, and I put one drop in this eye and one drop in this eye, and in five minutes, a complete difference. Every day, so I, I'm, a little, I'm a little skittish even saying this to you right now, but every day, I mean, I have no swelling except for old age, but no, no swelling, no itching, no burning, nothing. It is a miracle. Resurrection, John's eyes. I mean, it's like right there, right? Okay. That was my answer. And I'm hoping today, and I've got a lot to, and I've got to hurry, but I'm hoping today that you get an answer that's way more important than that one. When we talk about Jesus is the answer, that's not just a saying or a good song by Andre Crouch in the seventies. It is truly what I believe with all of my heart. Jesus is the answer. And you may ask, Jesus is the answer to what exactly? And that's a good question. I, w- I want to go through just my thoughts of, of what I think Jesus is the answer to. Number one, Jesus is the answer to finding peace. What, what, and, and, and what I mean by this is peace is not the absence of challenges or trouble. It is the, is the presence of Jesus in the midst of that. I think many of us have been taught that when you come to Jesus, man, no more trouble, no more challenges, everything's good, it's, you should have favor and joy and all those things, you, we should. But it doesn't mean that we don't have challenges. Jesus said this in John chapter 14, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart, and the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. Guys, I want you to hear me, you cannot buy peace You cannot drink peace, you can't smoke peace. The peace that passes understanding only comes through him. And that's why he said in Matthew 11, he said, come to me all of you who are weary and heavy laden and or or you carry heavy burdens. And like I said at the beginning, the cares of life and and maybe you're here today and and you're not a believer yet. You're you're just like, man, I don't have doubts. I've never really thought about it, church and all this stuff. I just don't, I'm not into that. But I'm here to tell you that the void in our lives at times is, is that peace that you've tried to find in a career or in success or in money or in drugs or in alcohol or sex or whatever. And I'm telling you, the, the peace that Jesus gives, the world cannot give. The second thing that Jesus answers is Jesus is the answer for finding healing. First Peter chapter 2 says he personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we could be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds, you've, you've heard, maybe heard this scripture before, by his stripes, you are healed. This has been taken out of context quite a bit in the kingdom 
or in the church, meaning that, you know, every Christian should be healed of every disease all the time. All we got to do is just pray right or say it right or whatever. And that's the connotation here in the original language, the Greek language in which this letter was written, the connotation is a spiritual connotation, which is that he makes us whole. In other words, the pieces of our lives, and all of us have been broken in some way or another. Maybe you had a broken home growing up. Maybe you've had broken relationships as an adult. Maybe you've had broken emotions or broken mental things, spiritual things. We've all been broken. We've all had things that have left pieces of our lives just laying there. Here's what Jesus does. He doesn't take away those circumstances necessarily. He doesn't always restore every relationship and make everything just perfect. Here's what he does. In the middle of the pieces, in the middle of the brokenness, he puts our lives back together in a, in a spiritual sense as well as in a right now reality sense, he, he makes us whole. And again, you can't buy that. Only Jesus brings that kind of healing and that kind of wholeness. Number three, Jesus is the answer to finding purpose. Ephesians chapter two says, we are God's masterpiece. Created anew in Christ Jesus, listen to this, so that we can do the good things. There is a plan. God has a plan, and that plan is good. God has a purpose for you and for me, not just because I'm a pastor. He has a purpose whether you're an attorney, a nurse, a teacher, a construction worker, a business owner, corporate, whatever you do. God has a plan and a purpose that he works through you. And in only him do we find meaning in life and purpose in life. Maybe some of us are 62 years old and we still wonder what my life is about. We still wonder, what was my purpose? What is my purpose? Guys, it's to do the good works. It's to do good, the, the good things that he planned for us long ago. In Jesus, we find purpose. Now, the last two are, are the most important. I don't know if you've ever wondered. So let me just ask you a question across all of our campuses. If you're watching online, just raise your hand. As after becoming a believer, right? So you're a believer. How many have sinned since you've believed? Raise your hand. That should be everyone. Okay. Many of you, I know. And I know there's multiple sins going on. That's a problem, isn't it? Sin. You don't come to Jesus and all of a sudden, whoop, sin free. Perfect. Think the right things, do the right things, say the right things. No, it, it's a challenge. But there's good news. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul gives a great dissertation on the resurrection. At the end of that chapter, here's what he says. Then when our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die, this scripture will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? For sin is the sting that results in death. And the law gives sin its power. But thank, listen, here's the, here's the scripture. But thank God, he gives us victory over sin. Now, we just said, we just said you still sin, right? And it's like, well, I don't have any victory. Oh, yeah. The victory is not because you don't sin. The victory is because Jesus didn't. Amen. The victory is not because you and I deserve it or because we're so good or because we're so holy or because we do the right things, although we need to, but, but that's not why. We have victory because of Jesus. When God looks at us, and, and we're believers, he sees Jesus. Jesus paid the price on the cross so that we could have victory over sin, but not only sin. So that's number four. Number four is Jesus is the answer for our sin problem. Put that number four on there. There we go. He's the answer to sin. He, he's the answer to our mistakes. Religion says try harder right? Religion says, try harder. Uh, culture says, hey, it doesn't matter. Jesus says, forgiven. Amen. Jesus is the answer to sin. And number five, Jesus, uh, same scripture, chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians, Jesus is the answer to death. There, he has given us victory over sin, even though we still sin, and he's given us victory over death, even though we still die. And here's how. 
we're, so we're in Bethany now. Jesus is getting ready to go into Jerusalem to be crucified. But before that, he, he raises Lazarus from the dead. And Lazarus, Mary, and Martha are very dear friends of Jesus, some, like some best friends. And, and Lazarus has died, and Jesus was not there in time to, to heal him from the disease, and so he died. He's been in the grave four days. So Jesus comes into town. Martha greets Jesus and is like, and, and like many of us have said, Jesus, if you could only have been here sooner. How many wish God would always come sooner, answer your prayers faster? And, and here's a great example. Jesus comes in and Martha is like, you know, if you would have been here, um, you could have healed him. He wouldn't have died. Here's what Jesus says, John chapter 11. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Any, listen, anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me, listen, everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never, ever die. That's the resurrection. We celebrate that this year, that, or this, this weekend, that, 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 that death doesn't have a hold on us. Because if you've had friends, if you've had relatives that have passed away, they lived and believed in Jesus, they're more alive today than we are. We have the promise of eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe would not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the resurrection. This is, the, this is what we celebrate, that, that sin is defeated and that death is defeated and that we as believers, we can actually live what we believe in the midst of our challenges, in the midst of our, our confusion and, and fear and, and problems and broken pieces and lack of purpose. In the middle of that, Jesus provides a peace that the world can't give. Jesus provides healing that the world cannot give. Jesus provides purpose that your life cannot produce. And he provides grace in our sin. And he provides life, resurrection life in our death. Now here's what he asked Martha. Do you believe this, Martha? And I believe that this is the question of the day. Not why mosquitoes are here or whatever. The question of the day is this, do we believe? Do we believe? When you came in, you received a communion packet. Would you grab that? It looks like, it looks like this, it's a little packet. On the top is a wafer, on the bottom is the cup. Would you take that out? And if you didn't receive one at any of our campuses, would you just raise your hand real high? Raise it and keep it up. And ushers are right now serving us. If you're online, you can get a cracker, a piece of bread, or a drink. Uh, come join us, would you? You don't have to be a member of Hope Fellowship to take the Lord's Supper. If you're a believer or want to be a believer, today is your day. And here's what I'm going to ask us, challenge us with, as I pray to open this. There we go. I want you to take the, the wafer in your hand and, and the cup in the other hand. And this is his body, represents his body. This represents his blood. And today, listen, today, if you walked into any of our campuses, if you are watching online and you would consider yourself not a believer, in other words, before you came, not really a believer, John. I'm, it's not a big deal to me. I live my life. It's all good. And I'm just gonna tell you, you, know, you, have, you have no idea what you're missing. And, and, if, and if you're ready to just believe, you don't have, to have all the questions answered because I don't have all the answers to all the questions, but if, if you're ready to believe that this is not just a fairy tale, that this is not just Disney, that Jesus actually did what he, what he, what he did and he lived the way that paid the price for us and gave himself on the cross and rose from the dead, when you take this bread and drink this cup, you're saying, I believe. I believe. That's your step today. Now, if you're a believer, I want you to pay attention. Many of us come to an Easter resurrection weekend, but we don't live it during the week. We don't live in that victory. 
we don't live in that peace. We don't live in that healing. And I'm just telling you, I'm not judging you. I'm just saying, guys, let's start living what we believe. And if you're a believer in the, in the room and, and, or at our campus and, and you're living a lack of peace, a lack of healing, your lack of purpose, you feel just overrun by life and sin and fear and all those kinds of things, I'm just telling you, just surrender to the Lord and say, God, help me to live what I believe. And as you take the bread and the cup, we're declaring, we believe. We believe. Let's take the bread together. Let's take the cup together. Jesus, we believe, we believe in the resurrection. We believe in life, and we believe that you are the answer. You're the answer to our peace. You're the answer to our healing. You're the answer to our purpose. You're the answer to our sin. You're the answer to death. We will never die having believed and lived in you. And so, Lord, I pray for those who made that step today, that, God, the, that you would change our lives And Lord, those of us as believers, that we'd start living what we believe. Start walking in victory. Start walking in peace. Start walking in what you died and rose from the dead to give us right now. May your kingdom come. May your will be done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.